again, we meet once again on the journey. So in the last few episodes, I was explaining uh, the personal revelations the Lord gave me about the six spirits that the uh, uh, Israelites met on their way, on their journey, on Exodus 23. So we talked about uh, about the six spirits of the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Philistines, the Hivites, the Hittites, and the Jebusites. And we explained uh, as to how those spirits impact our lives in our day-to-day -day lives as well, which the Israelites faced themselves as tribes on their way to the Promised Land, a land full of milk and honey. So in our lives as well as I explained, uh, in our journey towards perfection with our Lord Jesus, He has called us to be. Let me reiterate, He shall not, the Lord shall not, supernaturally shift us from one place to the other. So he shall want us to go through these challenges. Those are uh, the stepping stones or those are the uh, challenges that when we can, when we overcome them, that we get a crown of glory, a crown of uh, joy and the Lord has uh, in store for us. So those challenges are inevitable. So we went through those six uh, the tribes or the six spirits that we in our day-to-day -day lives we face and how to overcome them and uh, the examples and likewise. So today I want to add uh, a little bit more to that. So in Deuteronomy chapter 7, the Lord talks about once again to the Israelites the six spirits plus the Lord also tells or Moses talks about a seventh spirit. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, the Lord talks about, if you read from 7, uh, verse 1 onwards. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1. When the Lord your God brings you into the land which you go to possess, and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hevites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. So there the Lord tells us that when the Lord God brings you into the land which you go to possess and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites, which we already discussed in our previous episodes, and he mentions very specifically the Gergashites. So along with the rest of the five spirits, so altogether it makes seven right now. So in, in Exodus 23, we did not find this. In Exodus 23, the Lord specifically wrote about six spirits or six tribes. And now in Deuteronomy chapter 7, Lord also talks about another spirit called Gergashite spirit. So what is this Gergashite spirit? Having defeated all six spirits and overcome them in our challenges, in our lives, the Gergashite spirit, the meaning of Gergashite spirit is the characteristic of it is that that spirit is a very clay, a, a spirit that which always wants to go back to the old state and old nature, a spirit that which uh, uh, finds solace and finds comfort in the things of the old. In other words, in Mark 5, we find Jesus crossing over and uh, uh, going to a territory called Kedanis. Mark chapter 5, verses 1 to 3. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwellings among the tombs, and no one could bind him not even with chains. So in that uh, Gadarenes, where that the spirit that he found there in the man who was living at the tombs, there was a legion. And uh, the man had been tormented a lot. So this is the same spirit that we find, which is mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 7 as well, the Gergashite spirit. So what happens when the Gergashite spirit comes? Even if we have overcome the six spirits or the tribes that we uh, gathered in Exodus 23, 
The Gurkhashite spirit is capable of wearing us out, always reminds us in order to fall back on the old self of ours. So when we, uh, when we have a sense of satisfaction and the contentment and sense of uh, having overcome certain challenges in our life through the spirit of the Lord, we suddenly feel or suddenly we will get an impetus or any uh, influence from the outside world where that it will always draw us back to what we used to be. And sometimes we might even get a call saying, okay, uh, why aren't you coming for the parties? Why aren't you coming to socialize with us? Your friends might be asking. And sometimes, even sometimes it could be an old friend that who has not kept in touch with you for a long time suddenly contacts you and draws you back to certain old habits that you have been used to doing. And the minute that you step into that, even entertaining it in your head, that means the spirit would lead you back to what it used to be. And the minute that you start doing what you used to do, what we start, what we used to do before we overcame uh, those six spirits, that we may fall back on the old self of ours. That is the uh, the main chief characteristic of the Gurkhashite spirit, to draw you back to what it used to be and to draw you back to your old self, to your old habits, the things that you used to do, the journeys that you used to take, people whom you used to talk to, and which our, if, if our flesh is very accustomed to. Don't forget, this is an eternal battle. It's a constant battle between the flesh, the sarks, and the mind. So the flesh always remembers the pleasure, the things that we used to do, which are very fun, which are appealing, right? more encouraging it could be, because we have fulfilled the needs and requirements and the desires of our five senses. So it is very easy for the flesh to reminisce or to remind us of the old things that we used to do and to pull us back. So the Gurkhashite spirit, slowly but steadily, is capable of doing this to most of us. So I myself had one who's talking, as I repeatedly tell you, I'm not a theologian. I don't have the, the required credentials or the uh, qualifications to teach the Bible as it is, but I am imparting things as my Lord, the Holy Spirit, imparts into my life. As the Lord, Holy Spirit, tells me uh, of uh, certain revelations and uh, makes my eyes open. So I thought of sharing this with you so that it could be uh, beneficial and to edify and to help you as well, who is on the same journey as I am. You could be, or you, you may have already overcome it. But even if you have overcome it, watch out for this spirit of to draw you back to what you used to do on the Gurbhasha spirit. So what does this spirit do uh, by drawing us back? One, we may have to start our journey all over again. So when you start our journey all over again, which means we need to do our ABCs, one, two, threes, once again. In other words, Everything that we overcame of the six spirits that we discussed about, we may have to face them again. So that is why that we feel sometimes in our lives that we go round and round the merry-go-round and go back on our whole self and come back, go back to the pig stall and get washed again once again by the blood of Jesus. And we go back onto our old ways of doing and all our old sins, even without our knowledge. So sometimes people uh, have a wonderful name for this. They say history repeats or past repeats. Actually, no, it doesn't. The history repeats, yes, if you go back to doing our old things. History is history. Only thing is that we need to be very conscious of never to yield or open any cracks like the parasite spirit that we discussed in the series not to open any cracks so that we shall not be vulnerable for this Gurkhashite spirit to come and draw us back to our old self. So let's also uh, 
while we are on this journey, when this spirit comes on us, the Gagasha spirit to us, and try to understand what it really does to us. So when we are tired in our journey, of course we will be tired in our journey. That is why the Lord says, I am the living waters, drink from me and you'll never be thirsty. So people become thirsty when you are tired on the journey. So uh, let's physically let's revisit how the Israelites marched on their journey. They marched in columns, uh, thousands into thousands and likewise, and Israelites marched on their journey. And during their march, who goes right in the front? Or who goes a little bit behind the line? These are the people, those who are very energetic, men of valor, men of war, and they're full of energy. And slowly, when the energy depletes, and when you start wearing yourself out, you slowly backslide a little bit, and you tend to join the the, the rear side of the, the column. And sometimes, when you are tired, you are physically tired as well as mentally tired as well. The first comes the mental tiredness. So then the mental tiredness is because of certain things that you are thinking about the past. Israelites often thought about it, saying that we left our onions, the leeks, the tomatoes, the potatoes, however way you want to pronounce it, it doesn't matter. And the bread and the meat and everything. So mental tiredness or the blame, the Gurkhashite spirit, comes on yourself and tells you, oh, the old self is much better. Egypt was much better. We had plenty of things to eat, meat almost every day. And we had shelter, not like the desert that we are walking. Then that mental weariness automatically discourages your physical wear, physical self as well. So that you become physically weary at, at the same time. So then when that happens, you automatically backslide from, from the front, from a front liner to a backslid, a rear liner. So when you go back onto the rear or the, on the end of the column, it's very easy for you to be totally discouraged because you're no longer in the front. You don't know what's happening. You can't hear the leader's voice and you are in the back. And when that happens, when mentally you are weary and inside of you, you start thinking about the old self, which is good, which you think is good. And suddenly a few weary people, likewise with even minded people also get together and start murmuring and murmuring. So there you go, once again, all over the things start happening. And you go fall back on the column as you are marching, the rest of the people are marching, you go back on the column and chances are that you might even uh, fall apart or fall away from the march, from the direction and from the column. And there's a, there's a certain danger in that. So we find in Exodus 17 to defeat a tribe called Amalekites at the edge of his sword to annihilate them. Lord hates these Amalekites. Who are these Amalekites? And why does Lord hate these Amalekites so much, detest them so much? It's because the people, those who are backslid, and the people, those who have been affected or impacted by this Gagashite spirit, those who fall back on the column, the war tactic of this Amalekite spirit was always to attack you attack the Israelites from the rear end, from behind. So that's what Lord hated. So you can, I mean, let me, let me take an example. I mean, if you watch Nat Geo, uh, you find a lioness or a lion waiting patiently on the prey, a herd of buffaloes. The minute one buffalo falls back, falls away or separates from the herd and weary and limping, the lioness goes and attacks the buffalo. So the same picture that you can imagine how the Israelites were attacked in the column. 
those who had been weary, those who had been mentally worn out, physically worn out, blaming themselves, blaming the others, a group of people like that, and falling back in the rear of the column, and they come back, and Amalekites go and attack them. So this is exactly what happens in our church runs as well, my brothers and sisters. While you are on the march, on the journey, listening to the man of God, and getting the exhortations and advices and the directions of the Holy Spirit, suddenly a few people will come and murmur and try to create division, separation, discouragement to wear you out of the journey and the spirit that you have. Then you think, with the disappointments that you experience, then you might think that what your old self used to be, even your old church is much better than what you are, where you are right now. So you fall back. From the front seat, you might find yourself in the back seat. You don't come for your leaders' meetings anymore. You don't come for choir practices anymore, no. prayer meetings anymore. Right? You don't come for your Bible studies anymore. And you think, okay, uh, I'm not given prominence in the church, and you think that uh, uh, the, the, the church politics, I'm just talking about. I've seen it many in my life. So when that happens, then you suddenly from a front seat, you turn back to a, a rear seat, and the exit is just close by, and you just walk out. When you walk out, my brothers and sisters, be, be very conscious. The Amalekites in the world are there to snatch you and attack you. It's just like that you are walking out of the herd. The herd is moving on a, one, on one, on a single direction. The minute that you isolate yourself, the minute you entertain these thoughts of the Gurgashai spirit, the Hittites, the murmuring, and open cracks like the parasites, the minute those spirits enter you, that you are vulnerable in the end. So when you are vulnerable, the Amalekites will come back. This is what the Lord hated most about the Amalekites snatching innocent Israelites. Yes, they have thought about the past. Yes, they have thought about Egypt. Yes, they have thought about the leeks, pining over the leeks, the tomatoes, the potatoes, everything that they used to have. Yeah, but they're still innocent souls. So even whoever falls back from a black slide from the column, they're still innocent. A brother or a sister could go and talk to them and get them to their right way of thinking and make them draw them back to the herd. But the minute that you isolate yourself, you are vulnerable. You are in a very vulnerable spot. Then the enemy comes to attack and to take you by surprise. And you will also feel, okay, why am I getting these attacks over and over again? So it's, 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 it's a very serious uh, matter to think of. Something that you need to so you and I continuously be very conscious of the one who's talking, even myself. I need to be very conscious of, of our day-to-day -day happenings and of our calls that we get from our friends, the messages that we get on our social media and what we read in social media and what we hear in news. Never to be carried away unless the Holy Spirit, the Lord God himself, tells us and reveals us of certain things. This is always important while you're on the column, while you're on the march on your journey as the Lord is taking you. If you're weary and if you're wearing out, and if you feel that you are psychologically, physically wearing out, tired, overwrought, do not backslide to the back of the column. That is the time, my brothers and sisters, that you need to be surrounded by your other brothers and sisters, those who are in prayer, those who uphold you in prayer, those who will uh, strengthen you, feed you that time, and to take care of you. So the best thing to do is to come into the middle of the church, middle of the herd, middle of uh, the pack or the column, you, because that you cannot no longer, you can no longer go in the front, because you are weary. So that time, while you're in the middle, surrounded by your brothers and sisters, your brethren in the church, elders in the church, who will admonish you, who will advise you, who will pray for you, who will take care of you. And that's the time of uh, replenishing for you. 
and you need to spend a lot of time you and i will have to spend a lot of time in the lord and when we spend our time with the lord and when we are surrounded by even minded brothers and sisters in the church who will support each other in times of trouble when we are weary that's the time that we get our ourselves replenished encouraged revitalized revived it's more like a resurrection from our old self and we can defeat the battle in our heads about the gurkhasite spirit and any other spirit and shut down the voices that we hear from social media from our friends and the people those who murmur those who would always want to draw you back to your old self and to be with a sound mind as as the lord says so that's a certain tactic that we can apply and always be conscious whenever that you feel that you are worn out whenever that you feel that you are uh, tired in this journey do not murmur talk to the lord and talk to your brothers and sisters in the church those who are of the even mindset talk to elders and do not fall away and to be and to be in a bold situation or a spot of the amalekites so we all we now we started off with the gurgle type spirit in that case as a very enticing uh, a very encouraging spirit to draw you back to your old self to your old pleasures so it's a state of mind why am i talking about these spirits over and over again this is are the spirits that you find as a state of mind and we grapple with it and we battle it almost every day i myself have gone through uh these challenges of spiritual challenges all my life until the lord revealed to me these spiritual truths and this is real and it's manifested in our physical life in our day to day lives almost every every time almost every passing minute so we need to be very conscious sir so this is not a fair fair uh, fairy tale this is not a, a story from the old book this is from the living waters from the living word of our lord these are hidden treasures of our lord and uh, i find i find myself very privileged and humble to share this experience that i have gone through with you so that you could also uh, find solace and comfort and warning as well as admonition at certain points in order to overcome and face them boldly and as well as uh, courageously the lord says do not be discouraged be of good courage be strong whenever that these thoughts come because first the the evil one wants to plant a seed in your thought the same thing he did in the garden of eden with eve planted the seed of thought of logic the evil one asked do you think it is bad to eat do you think it's the only tree so likewise the questions were aroused in the same manner these thoughts of these spirits can play uh, games with your thoughts so that will manifest in physical ailments that will manifest in physical discouragement or drawbacks but starts in the mind with a thought not with the spirit of the lord in the absence of the spirit of the lord the physical body manifests so when the spirit of the lord comes in between is the spirit that gives that gives life the word the instructions of the spirit of the lord will overcome like as we are discussing right now the spirit of the mind or the instructions of the mind and the spirit of the word will manifest in our physical bodies to make us healed of all the infirmities to make us complete in lord jesus and to heal us of all sicknesses 
to take us away from all sorts of discouragements. This is the secret to understanding what the enemy is doing. Not the outward physical manifestations, but first insight in the spiritual realm and how it impacts our minds, then our spirit and our body. So I hope in this short message, uh, I managed to, uh, uh, to, to capture the essence of what I wanted to discuss about because of shy spirit and the vulnerability that it uh, draws upon your life makes you, uh, puts you in a very vulnerable spot to be uh, vulnerable to be attacked by Amalekites. So it's a beautiful story. Please do read uh, Deuteronomy uh, 7 as well as uh, Exodus 17. So you yourself, the Lord will reveal wonderful things much better than that you are uh, listening to. So it will be a personal conviction and a personal uh, uh, time with the Lord that you will have wonderful revelation and rhema from the Logos of the world. Well, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus for uh, making us understand the spiritual battle that we have in our mind. And we understand that it all starts with our mindset. It's our mind. And the mind mindset is influenced by the spiritual realms and the principalities up in the air. And thank you, Lord, the spirits that as we identify the root of the the, the spirit and how it impacts in our lives, that we are well equipped and we are well geared by the power of our Holy Spirit, by the precious blood of Jesus, so in order to combat them, to overcome them. Thank you, Father. We feel that your presence is always there with us. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who indwells in us. Thank you for the precious blood of Jesus as we call ourselves, protect our minds, protect our thoughts, protect our, uh, our bodies, by the powerful blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, so that we shall not fall prey or be vulnerable or susceptible to these spirits that loom in the air. Father, give you praise, give you thanks, in the mighty matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen.